So as things go, as you start to go down the rabbit hole of watches, you begin to rationalize and say, I can spend that amount of money. I can spend that amount of money. But I think one of the turning points is when you start to get to a thousand to $2,000, once you can start to justify this in your brain, it just seems like a downward slope from here. So what I wanted to do is try to figure out places of value. What are some of the definitive watches that you can find for $2,000 at every single category um, in style of watch out there? So what we're gonna try to do for this video is I'm going to pinpoint, looking at a variety of different categories, uh, one to two models that I think are definitive watches for that price segment. I'll also have some honorable mentions, but I really wanna try to key in on $2,000 as much as possible. I don't wanna get too close to $1,000 unless it's by far the better value because I have other videos where I looked at maybe the definitive watches for $1,000 and uh, elsewhere out there, but also giving myself some freedom both above and below uh, to kind of key in here. Also, I'm going to focus mostly on mainstream brands unless a micro brand is going to be the definitive choice, but once you get into this price range, it becomes less of the uh, actual case. And for the categories here, we have the everyday category. We then will have the pilots slash aviation category, then move into GMT, world timer, the dress category, the dive watch category, and then we'll round it out with the chronograph category. And finally, before we jump into this, if you want even more selections, because I had to be very specific in this selection of watches here, I really wanted to key in on the best of the best. I have a full list that goes beyond what is gonna be mentioned in this video here today, a blog down below that will go and look at some of the best watches all across the industry for $2,000. What is the best that you can get? Uh, there'll be dozens of watches in that list, so check it out down below. So now, our first category, we have the everyday category. And I actually have two submissions here, and then I also have a couple honorable mentions. So. An everyday watch, I do think this is more of a loose term, but I look for a watch that could be worn in a variety of different situations, maybe more casual as well as more dressy situations. And sometimes we'll have at least some up water resistance. Typically, I think ideal is 100 meters, but 50 meters will do in some instances. Uh, but the first one is going to be of that category of 50 uh, meters of water resistance, and that is with the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date. Now, to me, this is a interesting proposition for an everyday watch. Why I like it as a watch here to consider is because it does walk that line of classicism in terms of what it is going for. The pointer date function, cathedral hands, you have the coin edge bezel. Just some of these attributes are commonly not maybe associated from most contemporary watches. But then at the backbone of it all, you do have some contemporary touches that allow it to still not look out of place in a wide variety of situations or look dated by maybe a negative uh, perspective. It totally does look the part. Also have a variety of different dial colors to choose from, now have different case options to choose from as well with the recent release of 38 millimeter options now coming into the Salita variants. Of course, you have the caliber 400s that are now becoming um, widely available in a wide variety of cases, but if you wanna get into this $2,000 price range, you're gonna go for these Salita options, 50 meters of water resistance, a wide variety of dial colors, as well as cases now to choose from and materials to go along with it. It might not be as robust compared to our next option and looking into some of the honorable mentions and maybe what some people will think of an everyday watch. But to me, this is a different type of offering and something that is exclusively kind of its own thing, at least for this price range. There's not much else like it uh, that you're going to find, especially with the use of a pointer date complication. That's something that's typically reserved for the higher uh, echelon of brands. And now for the other option here for an everyday watch, I have the Tudor 1926. So this is a member of the classic collection for Tudor, not their sports watches that typically get the most love. This is also a watch that is one of the rare opportunities to basically find the perfect size for you. Being available from anything just north of 30 millimeters in case size, all the way up to a 41 millimeter case. So you have a wide array of options here, 100 meters of water resistance, different dial colors to choose from. I've always kind of mentioned that opaline with blue dial, but they do have some other uh, different dial colors that might be to your liking, which I think is another thing to go for. Maybe compared to the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date, doesn't necessarily have the same amount of charm. It does feel a bit more generic compared to some other offerings out there. But if you wanna get into Tudor for $2,000, plus getting some 
great versatility in the process. This is where this watch makes more sense. You're not, of course, getting any of their MT movements inside of here. Instead, uh, getting a Salida-based caliber on the inside. But for the typical Tudor standard, these are going to be fine-tuned and regulated and going to make sure these are cased up appropriately uh, and also running very well. And now for our two honorable mentions here, and these honestly could certainly be considered here uh, as actually maybe even better than some of the other ones, but this was probably the toughest category for me to really lock in on a definitive favorite. But the Nomos Club and Club Campus Collection, these are absolutely phenomenal watches. Uh, they are going to be starting around $1,500, $1,600 and extending from there, depending on if you want the open case back, closed case back. So uh, that really is kind of up to you. And then also mentioning the Zen 556 and 856 for the everyday category. So the 556, the reason why I didn't want to include it here is because I think it's actually a watch that's probably closer to being represented on the $1,000 price range. But of course, since uh, we've seen the price increases here, this has now started to drift into this $2,000 category. So it's kind of in the mid of these two price categories where it makes it a little bit more difficult to pinpoint and maybe say is being the definitive watch for that price segment. So now for our next category, we have the Pilot Aviation one. So with our first watch here, this could have also been included in the everyday category, but I felt it was more appropriate to be just fitting the mold here. And that is with the Longines Spirit. So when the Longines Spirit was initially unveiled in the past 18 months or so, We've seen that it was certainly, I think, nailing a certain part of Longines history with aviation and giving some good upside of getting that proprietary movement on the inside with its uh, silicon balance spring, COSE certification for many of these watches, uh, as well as getting 100 meters of water resistance. But the challenge for many was going to be with that 40 millimeter case option that it was going to wear larger than that. I would almost say it wears close to a 41 and a half millimeter case with those long lugs. But we did just recently see the unveiling of a 37 millimeter variant, which is kind of a nice way to offer up that 38 millimeter type size when it comes to the actual wearability and getting all the same type of upside that came with the Longines Spirit uh, previously. So now all wrists are being catered to while giving, I think the package, when you talk about checking off the boxes that was already there, 100 meters of water resistance, 70 hour power reserve movement with the COSC certified movement on the inside with an extended power reserve, sapphire crystal, and a variety of different dial colors to choose from with the heritage to back up it from a brand like Longines, all coming with a price range just north of $2,000. Also to back up this watch is the bracelet. The bracelet is phenomenal. It is thin. It doesn't have that same bulky type of nature that many other bracelets are going to have. It has almost a clean drape around the wrist. Also the clasp is going to be almost like a tailored type of tapered fit. Uh, that's not going to protrude so much from the backside of your wrist, which I really like. And how I would probably best describe this watch is it's pretty much 95%, if not more, of the IWC uh, Mark 18, for example, and getting in a price package around $2,000. So if you like this aviation uh, kind of hybrid everyday watch, uh, maybe almost giving some Flieger type looks in the process without stepping too far into that direction, and you only have $2,000 to spend, this watch is phenomenal. Simply put, I think it is probably one of the more definitive watches on this list for $2,000 that you're going to find. And now for our other watch here, I would say there's a distant second here would be Oris with the Big Crown Pro Pilot. These are still very nice watches. Uh, you have some different dial colors to choose from, rather traditional in terms of the Pilot Watch approach, but also its own Oris DNA. Wearable case is gonna work similar to a 40 millimeter in practice, 100 meters of water resistance, and the Salita movement on the inside, which will give you that conventional 38 hour power reserve and also a sapphire crystal. This to me is a good offering, but I would say the Longines uh, Spirit is going to be a little bit more definitive uh, with the up specifications that you're getting from the movement, as well as getting some different optionality with the dial colors and now cases uh, that are going to be available as well. And then for an honorable mention here, I'll mention Fortis. So Fortis is probably best known for their uh, Cosmonaut chronograph and different watches used in aviation and of course space uh, exploration. Uh, but this is a new collection that they've started to unveil and really kind of gotten behind. Uh, this Fortis Flieger 39 millimeter is going to be one that probably is going to best cater to those that like that middle of the road wearability. And it's just another one of these pilot watches, aviation style watches that um, are going to be considered that maybe doesn't necessarily get the amount of attention that it maybe deserves. So now for our next category, we have GMTs and world timers. So I wanted to put those two together because it felt appropriate. So the 
difficulty here was what to include. Do you want to actually look at things at $2,000 directly, or do you want to include things that are a little bit closer to $1,000 that we neglected in the video where we looked at the $1,000 price range, which previously we did, and I did not include these watches just because they were a little bit more north, and I felt that they were probably best appropriate for this video. Uh, but the first one here is with the Mito Ocean Star GMT. Now, you could include many different watches here for around $2,000, but this is certainly one that I think needs to be included because it just provides tremendous value. I actually think it is the entry door into the world of true GMTs along with the next watch that we're going to mention. 80 hour power reserve, true GMT movement with 200 meters of water resistance. It has a 44 millimeter case, so it is going to be a larger watch, but with that 49 and a half millimeter lug to lug dimension, it will wear closer to, I would say a 42 and a half millimeter case. Thickness is not bad at all. If you look at brands like Tudor with their GMTs coming in at 15 millimeters in thickness for some of their watches uh, that are going to be using that MT5652, you know, this I think just demonstrates again why this is a very interesting watch. ADR power reserve on this movement, but the most notable thing is going to be again, that true GMT function. So when you pull the crown to the second position, instead of changing the date, you then can have a bi-directional isolation of that local hour hand. So you'll have uninterrupted ability to set that time without stopping the balance wheel in the process. Is this perhaps overrated for some? Yeah, maybe, is it really, worth having that extra step of setting the hands? Is this really worth the extra money? In most cases, probably not for many, but the good news about this is, is you're not having to pay that extra money to get this functionality. This is in a price range where you're gonna see many Solita, Soprod, and Eta calibers that are going to be occupying these movements and actually beating them to the punch in a way because the price range is lower than some of the competition that are utilizing those movements. And then for the other option, just for a bit more money, but very similar in terms of its proposition, we have the Seiko Sharp Edge GMTs, this one being the SPB 217. So this watch comes in with a bit of a smaller case. You are adding some thickness to the case itself while losing some water resistance in the process. So it really comes down to what you care about more. Do you care more about the dimension set of the diameter and the lug to lug, or do you care more about the thickness and water resistance of the watch? That's gonna probably be the differentiating factor as well as the dial design. The dial design here is going to be a tad more involved, which some will say is maybe too much. Others will say it's absolutely spectacular and will just lose you in all the crevices in attention to detail that this one just kind of pops and uh, projects out when you are viewing it. Movement on the inside is from the 6R family of calibers, this one being the 6R64. So you are getting that extended power reserve compared to some of the other uh, movements from Seiko, which is nice to see, but also isolated our functionality here as well, and a variety of dial colors to choose from in the process, all with that very interesting array of diamond-like or waffle-like pattern on that dial. And then a couple honorable mentions here. One that I will mention is the Monta Atlas. Uh, this is a fantastic finished GMT watch. You also get the cool touch with the bent or elevated end of that GMT hand that allows it to cast over the raised indices of the dials. This is a wonderfully finished watch, regardless of whether you're talking about mainstream brand or micro, it stands with pretty much anything else in the price category. And then you have the Zodiac World Timer, the Super Seawolf World Timer now that it's known as, rather than the Aerospace GMTs. This follows a long lineage of watches produced by Zodiac and the GMT family, a variety of different dial colors. These are probably best known for now in falling into really attainable price range for GMT Swiss watch made standards, but also doing it with the pop of color and doing it in their own way that uh, really make them more compelling and fun just additions to a collection, even if you have watches that far ascend past the price range that we're talking about today. Now for the dress category. So this was probably the easiest one for me to find the definitive pillars. And I think there are two brands that separate from the competition here and producing the best dress watches for around $2,000. The first one is going to be with Nomos. So Nomos is probably best known for this entry-level trio of watches with the Orion, the Ludwig, and the Tangente. Uh, right there at $2,000, variety of different dial colors. If you're talking about the alpha manual power movements on the inside, these variants also being available in some different size options 
are definitive pillars in the world of dress watches. Although maybe being for more acquired taste, you have the Orion that is going to be more with the traditional minimalist approach with those uh, simple linear markings. You have the Ludwig with the Roman numeral markings, and then you have the Tangente with the mix of numerals and traditional linear markings that really were the initial design that I commonly associate with Nomos. Now, I personally own a Nomos Orion, which is my choice of the three in the design style, but the combination of German design and this really clean approach with the movements on the inside with the alpha manual, I think is a perfect combination of fit, finish, and look that will allow these to simply be probably some of the best watches you're gonna find for $2,000. I have many videos on these watches talking about the design history, talking about uh, just more of the nuances to Nomos as a brand. Of course, many of you watching know that I'm a big fan of the brand, uh, but these have to be one of the watches to consider on $2,000 if you want to get a dress watch. Now, if you're more into the classic design of things and you don't wanna necessarily get into more of the avant-garde approach that some Nomos watches can have, I would then look at Longines. Now, Longines has a wide collection of dress watches that you can look at. Pulling more from their, I would say, heritage collection is probably where most people are going to uh, look in the direction of. I would say a few that stand out to me are the Longines Silver Arrow. This has a very unique representation of that mid 20th century design, wearable case at 38 and a half millimeters, and is one of the watches that quickly comes to mind when thinking of Longines. And then, of course, another watch that you could go for would be the Heritage Classic Sector. This is a watch I actually have on my wrist right now. This is a nice combination of leaning into the past and not looking out of place when it comes to the dress category, but also looking really solid if you wanted to wear it in a more casual environment. Something about the sector dial and having those two concentric circle type of outline that's housing uh, the numerals as well as those markings. It allows it to have some casual feel depending on the strap. Like I have it on a bracelet here. I just put some aftermarket bracelet on this watch and it does look the part, like it does feel like it could potentially be a more casual, sporty type of equation compared to uh, the dressy side of things that maybe something like the Silver Arrow or the flagship Heritage might have in the, its direction. Also, you do have the Dolce Vita if you wanted something that's going to be of the rectangular style. There are some other watches out there like the Oris Rectangular that just came out as well, but this was kind of the first. It kind of marries that sector dial with this approach with that rectangular case. So it's another one to include here for Longines. But both of these brands, to me, definitive dress watches for $2,000. Just get lost in these brands. I think these are the two leaders. There are some other ones, but to me, both of these brands have a huge point of separation from much of the competition. Now for our next category here, we do have dive watches. So dive watches, I would say there are a few that come to mind, but there certainly are many that you can include in this 2000 list. So this is definitely where I would recommend checking out the blog where we go into more detail on different watches that are available in this segment. The first here is with Doxa, with the Doxa Sub 300. Now this is a watch to me that if you are a traditional dive watch fan and you like the history of dive watches and having watches that also from a dive history and significance, if that's something that you care about more than just the aesthetics and what is being delivered from a modern package, or you care about that just as much, then this is the watch that I would probably consider. Now it's best known for its splash of color and its design style that is going to certainly be more in alignment with the actual needs of divers and what they were uh, you know, needing in those murky uh, underwater environments. Also the Jacques Cousteau connection with these watches, Clive Cussler, this is, to me is a part of 1970s, kind of this retro dive uh, era, and I think it really does epitomize that in many ways. A variety of dial colors to choose from, all with their corresponding names to go along with it. 42 millimeter case, 13.3 millimeters thick, lug to lug is going to wear smaller than that. I would say wears closer to a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case. 300 meters of water resistance, hence the Doxa Sub 300, and an automatic at a 2824 on the inside with a cost version available as well, depending on the 300 versus 300T. A little bit of a strange and confusing situation, but certainly an icon of dive watches and around this price range. But say you want something that wears more contemporary, you want something that's going to be more mass appealing, it's going to do the job in pretty much every scenario, might not even look out of place if you wore it uh, with more formal attire. I know that might be a stretch, but I think with the Oris Aquis, it is a really good gatekeeper for what a $2,000 dive watch should be. What I would say for this one is you could go for a wide variety of dial colors, 
uh, you can get as crazy as you want. You can go for the upcycle. You could go for uh, some of the different limited edition models that they've unveiled in the past with a lot of the ocean conservation efforts that they're doing. Or you could just go for something more conventional with a blue or say a gray. There, there are just so many to choose from here. Also different case sizes to choose from. I would say the 41 and a half is going to be that classic 40 millimeter-esque style case that many people love to see from a dive watch. So if that's what you want from this, I go for the 41 and a half. They all wear slightly smaller because of that integrated bracelet. 300 meters of water resistance, Salita movement on the inside. There are, of course, the caliber 400 ones available, but that's now ascending into a different price range. Also, the bracelet is well done, so you're not gonna be necessarily missing out or feeling like you're missing out with wearing that bracelet every single day. And then for our final dive watch here from a consideration, I actually have three here because the dive watch category was so tough and I was trying to keep them as close to $2,000 as possible. Last one here is right in the money with the Rado Captain Cook. So you have two different cases that you can go for. You can go for the 42 millimeter option or the 37 millimeter option. Both of them are going to wear smaller than what the case size is going to indicate. I own a 42 millimeter option uh, one just because I felt the 37 millimeter was a tad too small for me uh, with that outside bezel pulling from the dial, it just wore closer to a 36 and a half on my wrist. Also with the factoring of that beads of rice bracelet that's going to shoot straight down, not add anything to that lug to lug dimension, which for both of these is going to be more condensed than what that case size is going to indicate. Thickness on the Captain Cook is also one of the main reasons why I like this watch. You're talking extended water resistance on these watches, but coming in on that 42 millimeter option version at 12 millimeters. I mean, these are some of the thinner dive watches that you're going to find in the price category. 80 hour power reserve on the inside as well with those movements. Ceramic bezel, box sapphire crystal, really solid bracelet minus the emission of micro adjustment. That is the one killer of this watch uh, when it comes to the bracelet, but otherwise a underrated sleep and when you're talking about right on the uh, money of $2,000, this is one to certainly consider. And then a couple honorable mentions. I'll mention the Mula Glasuta Promer Go. This is a watch that I've mentioned when you're talking about the Germanic uh, utilitarian type of dive watch. This is one to consider. And then you also have Zinn with the EZM3. Uh, these being certainly different animals compared to the other watches mentioned, maybe leaning into more of the Doxa Sub 300 category of things and leaning into more historical, actual ut uh, utility of what a diver might need, but still uh, probably a little bit more out there, but a wide Wide variety of dive watches could be included here. Uh, so those are just a couple other honorable mentions. And now to round us out here for our final category, we have the chronograph. So the chronograph in this category is mostly going to be dictated by the access to movements that a brand will have. So this is where you start to get into for around $2,000, Swiss made chronographs. And for Swiss made chronograph movements, you have a few different options. You can go for something modular. You can go for the Eta 28942, which you can start to become available around $1,000 to $1,500 with some micro brands, maybe undercutting that to some degree, depending on assembly. But I wanna get into an integrated Swiss mechanical chronograph movement. And I think there's two places to look here around $2,000. The first is going to be with Hamilton. So Hamilton, you have a now wide variety of different chronographs. Now, initially it was the Intramatic chronograph that I think is going to uh, maybe be the perfect representation of classic Hamilton, as well as the Chrono H, the Chrono H being a mechanical version and having some slight different modifications to the dial. I have a full review on that. I actually reviewed that watch on the site in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the old manufacturer. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, that watch is going to be of the manual winding variety, 40 millimeter case. And you also have the Hamilton Hamilton Intramatic Auto, which is going to have slight differences to the dial, uh, has more of that panda style look, which another fantastic watch. Going to be pulling from those chronomatic watches from uh, the 1960s from Hamilton. Beautiful watches, uh, horizontal register display with that Valju 7753 base with an extended power reserve beyond 60 hours. Thickness, all things considered for some might be a little thick, but compared to much of the competition, around 14.3, 14.4 millimeters in thickness. Uh, I think these are absolutely great in the wearability department. Some might disagree with me on that, but compared to pretty much any other chronograph that you're gonna find out there, 
uh, even beyond into the luxury category, just finding a thin chronograph movement doesn't really become popular uh, or possible until you start to get into maybe something like the Omega Speedmaster or looking into like the Zenith El Primero. It's, it is challenging to make a thin chronograph movement. And these are among the best offerings for $2,000 without question. You also could look at one of the new offerings from Hamilton with the Pilot Pioneer Mechanical Chronograph. So this leans into more aviation theme rather than some of these Panda style chronographs uh, that Hamilton is also known for coming from a similar era, but leaning more into that aviation uh, backstory and history of the brand uh, and doing it in a very similar pack in terms of wearability as well as the movement on the inside. And then for our final choice here for the chronograph category, I think the other one, and even being less expensive, we have the Tissot PRX Chrono. Now this was probably one of the bigger surprises of 2022. I knew there were gonna be more PRXs for this year, but I was very surprised to see a new Chrono. Now the Chrono is available at 42 millimeters in case size, also coming with a Valju 7753 base, so similar structure here, 100 meters of water resistance and thickness very similar to that of the Hamilton Chronos, a little bit thicker on the wrist, but it does have a different case back design that's going to allow it to uh, recess and wear on the wrist to a pretty interesting degree. Now the lug to lug dimension with that integrated bracelet might scare some people away. This is not going to be a small watch. It does wear bigger than the 40 millimeter option. So if you didn't like the way the 40 millimeter PRX wore, this is just simply not going to be for you. However, I will show some shots of it on my wrist. These have not been modified in any way. It's just a straight down shot of this watch on my six and a quarter inch wrist. If you like the look of this, maybe don't knock it until you try it because I think with the style, it kind of goes for that maybe AP Royal Oak offshore vibe, but we're talking about a watch south of $2,000 in price, getting this integrated chronograph movement on the inside. The blue dial, simply spectacular. This looks so good. They knocked it out of the park with this one. You also have an additional one with some golden accents, white dial, uh, black markings. That is the other option for the PRX chrono. But these to me, the two pillars, Tissot and Hamilton, mostly as a byproduct of their access to these movements. Uh, it's very difficult for a third party to start to get into this world of chronographs. And both of them are taking these movements and putting them in a design package that simply work. They look fantastic. But all right, guys, that is my list, looking at some of the best watches at every category for $2,000. Now, I wasn't able to include everything, so don't get mad at me. So what I will mention again is check out the blog down below, the article looking at some of the best options for $2,000 that will extend this list quite a bit. Uh, so definitely check that out as well. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as well. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow along on Instagram and also subscribe to our newsletter on our website where we send you dedicated written content every single week right to your inbox. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.